Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're gonna look at another example of using integration by parts. And this time, we're gonna use it for a definite integral. So our integral of interest is the definite integral from zero to one of our arc tangent or inverse tangent function. And so we're gonna use our integration by parts formula here to assist us in solving this integral, but we're gonna to have to use that definite integral version of our integration by parts formula. So we have to include these limits of integration in our integrals. And remember that UV piece is like the antiderivative that just came out of an integral. We have to evaluate that at the upper limit as well as the lower limit of integration and take the difference between those two values. All right, so to get the ball rolling, first we have to find our pieces for our integration by parts formula, u, v, v, and du. Like always, we're gonna start by choosing u first as well as dv. And from those choices, they will inform us what du and v will have to be. To help us make our choice for u, we can use our LIATE acronym. And so let's go ahead and look. We only really have one function involved here. It's tangent inverse and inverse trig function or an inverse function. So that's gonna be our choice for u. Tangent inverse of x. Well, and the only other piece left over is dx. That's what our differential of v is gonna to have to be equal to. So just like in our other examples, to go from u to du, we have to take the derivative of the function we set u equal to. So du will be equal to the derivative of inverse tangent. And remember that one has the derivative of one over one plus x squared. The differential of x goes along with that piece as well. The last piece we need is v, and we find that by taking the integral or antiderivative of our equation for dv, well, the antiderivative of dx is just going to be x. So we found the four pieces that are required for our integration by parts formula. Now let's plug them into our formula and start making some progress on this problem. So this is gonna be equal to u times v. That's x times tangent inverse of x. And we have to remember here, we're started with a definite integral. So we'll have to evaluate u and v. This is like our, one of our antiderivatives at the upper limit of integration and subtract away from that u times v or x times tangent inverse of x evaluated at our lower limit of integration. That's the uv part of our integration by parts formula. To finish it off, we have to subtract away from that the definite integral from zero to one of v times the differential of u. Well, v is x, the differential of u is one over one plus x squared. If we multiply those together, we get x over one plus x squared, and then we have that differential of x in there as well. And so that first piece, we have to evaluate this product x times tangent inverse of x at our upper limit of integration of one. Well, so x is gonna be equal to one, that's multiplied by tangent inverse of one. And we have to remember from our unit circle or inverse trig functions, that tangent inverse of one is equal to pi over four. We have to subtract away from that, our product u times v evaluated at our lower limit of integration, that's gonna be zero times tangent inverse of zero, and that's zero times zero, so that lower limit doesn't contribute anything. That first piece just simplifies to pi over four, and we still have to subtract away from that our definite integral from zero to one of x over one plus x squared. And so now this integral is probably not one that we can identify the antiderivative of just from inspection. In order to find this antiderivative, we're gonna have to do a little side u substitution. And maybe I shouldn't use u here because I've already used it in my integration by parts formula. Let's go ahead and maybe call it a, uh, a t substitution instead. So we'll go ahead and let t be equal to one plus x squared. Then dt would be equal to two x times dx. So the one plus x squared in the denominator will turn into our new variable t. And the product in the numerator, x times the differential of x is gonna be equal to one half times the differential of t. All right, so now that we have our t substitution set up, Let's go ahead and rewrite that last integral in terms of our new variable t. Remember this first term pi over four was from our first piece. We've already taken care of that, but we can't forget it. So we're gonna have pi over four minus this integral and making our translation. The first thing we have to do is rewrite our limits of integration in terms of our new variable. We could ignore the step and rewrite everything in terms of our original variable later, 
But in this example, it's very easy to change these limits of integration. Remember, this equation tells us exactly how to go from our t values to our x values and back. So all of our t values are just one more than our x values squared, and our original limits of integration are those x values. So what's one more than zero squared? Well, that's one. What's one more than one squared? Well, that's two. So our limits of integration in terms of t are going to be one and two instead of zero and one. So how do we rewrite the rest of our function, our integrand in terms of this new variable t? Well, one over one plus x squared is going to become one over t, then x times the differential of x we talked about earlier, that's going to be one half times dt. All right, so remember that pi over four was just a constant term. And now we have to subtract away from that the antiderivative of one half of t evaluated at two and one with that difference being taken. So the antiderivative of one half of one over t is going to be one half times the natural log of the absolute value of t. And then we have to evaluate that at our upper limit of integration at two and also at our lower limit of integration of one and split that difference. But when we plug in t equals one, we get the natural log of one, which is just zero. So this simplifies in the end pretty nicely to pi over four minus one half times the natural log of two. So pi over four minus one half times the natural log of two is the exact value of our original definite integral, the integral from zero to one of tangent inverse of x. In this example, we're trying to evaluate the indefinite integral of the function x squared times e to the x. In our earlier example, we saw how to find the antiderivative of x times e to the x, and we're going to see in this problem that uh, knowing that is actually going to help us speed this process up just a little bit. So let's go ahead and attempt to evaluate this integral using our integration by parts formula. The first step in that process is always identifying u and dv. And so if we refer to our LIATE acronym, logs are the first choice, inverse trig functions or inverse functions are our second choice, then algebraic functions followed by trig functions and exponential functions. We'll really have two functions involved in this product that is our integrand, x squared and e to the x e to the x is an exponential function, that's our last choice here. x squared is an example of an algebraic function, so that's going to be our first choice for u. So we're going to let u be equal to x squared, then dv is going to be the remaining piece of our integrand, e to the x times the differential of x. Now let's go ahead and find the other pieces we need for our integration by parts formula. Differentiating u helps us find du. The derivative of x squared is going to be 2x. So du is going to be equal to 2x times the differential of x. And we've seen this one a couple times already. Uh, to go from dv to v, we have to integrate or find the antiderivative. And what is the integral or antiderivative of e to the x? Well, it's e to the x it's itself. So we found our pieces for our integration by parts formula. Now let's go ahead and plug those pieces in. The first thing we have is u times v. Well, it's going to be x squared times e to the x. Then we have to subtract away from that v times du. Well, v is e to the x, and du is 2x times the differential of x. So we can rewrite this second integral as minus the integral of 2x times e to the x dx. And so we have made some progress on our original integral. And what we might notice is the second integral that shows up after the first iteration of our integration by parts formula is an integral we saw in our first example, or similar to an integral we saw in our first example. Right? We could also write this as x squared times e to the x minus 2 times the integral of x times e to the x to really force us to see that that is that integral that we ran into earlier. And so the idea now is to evaluate this indefinite integral, we can either go through integration by parts again or recycle our work from the last time we did this problem using integration by parts. If we were to go through all the steps of integration by parts a second time, well, we'd set u equal to x and dv equal to e to the x and go through all that. But it might be better just to remember, well, earlier when we did this problem, what we found was the antiderivative of x times e to the x was equal to x times e to the x minus e to the x. 
And so now we can remember that and make a substitution instead of going through our integration by parts process a second time. So our first piece is still the same. Still have x squared times e to the x. Now we have to subtract away from that two times this integral, the antiderivative of x times e to the x. But we know that quantity is equal to x times e to the x minus e to the x. And then we could add some constant integration c to that as well. So just to clean things up a little bit, write it in a simpler way. This can be x squared times e to the x minus 2x times e to the x plus 2e to the x plus some constant of integration plus c. And so the point of this example was to look at at least one example where we have to use integration by parts more than one time to reach our answer. We didn't technically go through all the steps of a second iteration of integration by parts because we just did that problem, but there definitely are problems that exist out there where you have to solve them by using integration by parts two, three, or maybe even more times than that. If you end up using a table of integrals to help you evaluate antiderivatives or integrals, a lot of those formulas, especially the reduction ones, are going to come from multiple uses of integration by parts. In this example, we're interested in evaluating the indefinite integral of the function sine of x times e to the x. And what we're going to see is that this example is going to involve paying very close attention to our work throughout the entire process of using integration by parts. Because what is going to end up happening is our original integral is going to show up at some point in our integration by parts formula, and we're going to have to do some integral algebra to eventually find our answer and our antiderivative. But we're going to get started in the same way we always do with integration by parts, and that is finding u and dv. So from our acronym LIATE, well, our functions are sine of x and e to the x, a trig function and an exponential function. And while trig functions are above exponential functions in our hierarchy, so we're going to go ahead and let u be equal to our trig function sine of x, and then dv will be our leftover piece, our exponential function, and the differential of x. All right, so we need to find du and v from our choices of u and dv. du is just the derivative of u. The derivative of sine is cosine. And v is just the antiderivative of dv. And the antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x. And so now by our integration by parts formula, we know that our original integral, the integral of sine of x times e to the x dx, is going to be equal to u times v which is sine of x times e to the x, minus the indefinite integral of v times du. So that's cosine of x times e to the x. Can't forget my differential of x there either. OK, so we've gone through one iteration of integration by parts. And we've ended up with our original integral being in terms of this other integral that is still pretty complicated, right? How are we going to evaluate? the antiderivative or the integral of cosine of x times e to the x, well, we got a product of two functions. We're going to have to use integration by parts again. So I want to reuse u and dv to not make things too complicated and write down yet another version of our integration by parts formula. But for the second time around, let's go ahead and do it in a different color to help us keep things straight. Or we could have called this like u1 and dv1 and du1 and v1 and these next ones u2 and dv2 du2 and v2, just to help keep things organized. All right, so we're going through a second iteration of integration by parts, and really we're only applying it to that second piece, the integral that requires integration by parts, the integral of cosine of x times e to the x. Well, if we use our LIATE acronym again, what is our choice for u going to be the second time around? It's still going to be our trig function over our exponential function. It's going to be cosine of x. And actually, interesting uh, fact here, if we switched up our choice for u and dv at this point, if we let u equal e to the x and dv be our cosine piece, we'd actually end up just undoing that first iteration of integration by parts, and we'd be back to where we started without any progress being made. So it's always nice to stick to this acronym LIATE in this hierarchy, but more importantly, it's to be consistent in your choices. All right, so u is going to be cosine of x, dv is going to be the leftover piece, e to the x, times the differential of x. Well, then we know what our new v, or v2, is going to be. That's just e to the x. 
and du or du2 is going to be negative sine of x times the differential of x. So now we're going to rewrite our entire problem after the second iteration of integration by parts. And so remember our original integral, the one we started with, is the integral of sine of x times e to the x times the differential of x from our first iteration of integration by parts. We saw that our antiderivative involved sine of x times e to the x, and we had to subtract away from it the second integral, the second antiderivative of cosine of x times e to the x. But the second integral required us to do integration by parts a second time around, and that's what this work over here is helping us with. So now in these brackets, I'm going to substitute our answer for the second integral that we would get from integration by parts. Well, what is our integral equal to? u times v for our second choices here. That's going to be cosine of x times e to the x. And then we have to subtract away from that v times du. Well, what is our second choice for v? It's e to the x. What is our second choice for du or du2? It's negative sine of x times the differential of x. So we're going to have negative sine of x times e to the x inside of that second integral. So then we'll, what's going to happen here? These two negatives are going to cancel each other out. So we actually have plus that integral of sine of x times e to the x inside of these brackets. And remember, that integral, sine of x times e to the x, was our starting integral. And so this is the point where we have to be careful and pay attention and start doing some integral algebra. So I'm just setting us up to help us do our integral algebra here, just basically distributing this negative sign to each of these terms inside of our brackets. Now if we step back and look at what we have, after doing integration by parts two times, we know that our original integral is equal to sine of x times e to the x minus cosine of x times e to the x minus this integral, but this integral is sine of x times e to the x, the same integral that we started with. And so now what we're going to do is just combine like terms, right? We can add this integral to each side of our equation. And what that would give us is two copies of our integral on the left-hand side. That would cancel out that integral on the right-hand side. And now our right-hand side would just be sine of x times e to the x minus cosine of x times e to the x. And well, what are we interested in finding? Not two times this integral, but just one of these integrals. How do we isolate and get just one of those integrals or antiderivatives of sine of x times e to the x, well, we just divide away this factor of 2. So after doing so, we now know what our integral is exactly equal to. It's sine of x times e to the x minus cosine of x times e to the x all over 2 plus some constant of integration c. So the point of this example was again to see sometimes we have to use integration by parts multiple times. And furthermore, when using multiple iterations of integration by parts, especially when you're working with these trig functions that loop back into themselves after you take multiple derivatives, you might end up seeing that original integral show up. And if that's the case, you want to do some integral algebra to solve for that integral. And doing so will help you find your antiderivative or the answer to your integral.